When we started on our RV journey, we knew we had to manage our water, mm -hmm. how much we had, you know, get our water, hook up the water, things like that. But one of the things we didn't realize is we had to be concerned about what's in our water. And I've been really wondering what's in our water because every stinking campground we go to, it either tastes different, smells, smells different, different, or looks different with the color. Or feels different too. Mm -hmm. The telltale sign is when you see all the rust spots on your campsite, definitely worry about what's in your water. Yep. So at, by the time you're done with this video, you're gonna understand what's in your water and it's not good stuff. No. And how you can protect yourself from all of the waterborne pathogens and elements that are out there. So we started searching water systems a little while ago. And of course, we looked at the one that everybody out there goes to, and that's the clear source. And the clear source is a fine system. It's a triple filtration system that works well. Being from the Detroit area, I was fully aware of the Flint water crisis and was doing some research around what is in our water. And this company called Blue Technologies popped up. And Blue Technologies is a company that started as a direct result of the Flint water crisis. So as we dug in a little bit more, it became more and more intriguing about what Blue Technologies was doing. So we reached out to Blue Technologies. They were in Portage, Michigan. We were in Ann Arbor. It was only a couple of hours away and they were happy to talk to us. We got in our car and we drove to Portage, Michigan and got to sit down with the CEO of Blue Technologies. Yeah, Corbin Collet, great guy. Used to be an RVer, so he is fully aware of the challenges that the RVers face out in the world. We had a great conversation with him. You think city water, you're safe. Right. But obviously you're not. And that's what inspired you to do this. Mm -hmm. And I, we'd love to hear more about that. Sure. And it's a, it's a kind of an interesting story, right? It was uh, actually spawned by a much bigger issue that we all lived through, which was Corona. Um, my wife is an ex-pandemic uh, military person and a technologist as well. And um, as we got into the pandemic, her daughter is a nurse and we realized they were not sanitizing or disinfecting masks. So we put our brains together and with some of the help of our other team, we created a UV solution that could disinfect masks. So during the pandemic time frame, we were disinfecting masks. Well, as we got further into that, we started looking at how do we use this for other applications and got into the water situation and understanding that Flint water crisis, which happened, I think, in 2014, yeah. um, it was, Legionella was the main contributor to a lot of the deaths and sicknesses and we learned that UV can kill that. So as we went down that path, we started into the water space and looking at how do we apply this to solve the world's water problems. Um, and the rest of the story, which we'll talk about it, less into filtration and people's awareness of the, their water quality. So your slogan, no dirty water, can you talk more about that and what you're, you know, a little bit more about the mission of Absolutely. the technology? Absolutely, so if you look at the, the crisis worldwide, which we started again, looking at how we could apply this technology to help the water crisis. Um, we started learning that you know 3.5 million people die of water-related illnesses each year. 50% um, of the hospital beds in the, U or in the world are filled with water-related illnesses. Wow. Um, and, we, and then we started to say, you know, how do we impact the world? Um, and as you know, as, as you look into the municipality, there's a lot of government regulation and realize that our reach um, didn't necessarily need to be to Africa or to, to other international locations. We actually had a problem right here, mm -hmm. going back to the Flint water crisis. Yeah. Um, so that's when we got into the idea that how do we help the U.S.? And there's a lot of, again, government regulation around homes, but what else could we do to impact the U.S.? And that's what led us into the RV market, mm -hmm. if you will. There's 11.2 million registered RV owners. Yep. That's a big number, right? Um, and those people are going to different water sources all the time. And so to us, that felt like the right water market to try to impact a large population, 11.2 people, um, while also getting them educated so they can take that back home and share that with, we'll call it the, the people in their neighborhoods, right? So they become aware on the home side. So we started out with the, the inline filter. We had one here in the rig and we thought, you know, you know, a few months, we'll get the clear source whenever. And I think we went, what, four months or so? We thought we were gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. 
And after talking to Corbin, I'm like, oh, what have I been drinking for four months? Those, I'm gonna say it scared me a little bit. Yeah, those inline <laughs> filters that everybody starts out with, just don't cut it. You know, the standard inline that they'll use in every campground, everyone has, and yep, I, we pers one. I personally thought I was safe with that. Well, our, our products can filtrate uh, particles that are 100 times smaller than that standard uh, filter that you think that you're safe with, right? So yes, there's definitely a noticeable dis difference. And as you've mentioned on the taste and color, what the, the systems we developed do is they also um, have different stages that kind of like a treatment plant would. You take out the sediment, you take out the taste and smell, which is a different thing, mm -hmm. and then get down to a lot of the things that could harm you. Oh, I, do I want to spend four or five hundred dollars on a water filtration system? And I think that that's the biggest message I, I, I think we're getting across here is yes, you do, mm -hmm. because the water you're drinking, you don't you don't know what's in it, especially from place to place. It varies so much. And um, it's, you know, I'd say scary, but it's kind of scary. It is scary. So we asked Corbin directly, what the heck is in our drinking water and what are the dangers of our water? There's poop in our water. There's grandma's pills in our water. There's other stuff in our water. I had no idea. Heavy metals. It goes oh, on, yeah, heavy and metals on and sure. on and oh. on. So we drank city water, Denver city water, for years and years mm -hmm. and never thought because, you know, it's Denver, it's safe. Um, so what are some of the, the ramifications of, of drinking water that, that is dirty and you don't even know that it's dirty? The health ramifications, what would, what would that be? Sure. A lot of, I mean, the major ones that you get into are a lot of the say the word fecal matter based ones, right? So you'll get into sicknesses that cause you to be dehydrated or probably the most common that we've we've watched. That's why they have boil alerts. And We were in a campground in Kentucky and when we rolled in, the, the, the owner of the campground was so proud. It's like, we're on city water. He was we're super proud of so that. So proud, it's like his claim to fame. And then we went out the next day and we came back. And what did we get? To this. Boil Boiled order. water alert. Yes, we had to boil our water for like three days because the city mm -hmm. water went down for I don't know how long, but and I didn't and I learned something when city water goes down and there's no water or any water goes down, and there's no water through the pipes that can allow bacteria can grow um, during that time when there's no pressure and, and water thing, going and through. things fall off the pipes yeah. and bacteria, all kinds of nastiness can happen. Yeah. A lot of the rivers in Michigan, if they'll have a municipality that may overflow, if you will, that's a lot of their overflows are into rivers. So that's the most common that you will see. Um, and we've seen the Flint crisis where that actually stemmed from water as well. It pulled out of the, the Flint River. Right. So a lot of that, and that like kind of led us to the product we talked about that, you know, we assume that the natural sources are probably fairly well, good, like rivers and streams. And so that's really what got us attracted to try to pull some of these things out for those people who don't have a government upstream trying to protect them. But, e but even when the government is trying to protect them, you, it fails. It's, it can fail, yes. Right, yes. Yep. All right, so here it is, our Blue Technologies complete water system. Now you can buy this in parts and pieces, um, we, thought our water and our health was important enough to get the entire system. So we got the filtration system, we went with the water softener, and we went with the hoses with the Quick Connect program, which we highly recommend that you do. Yeah, so much easier. All right, so as we mentioned earlier, we went with the water softener as well. Victoria and I both grew up- With well water. With well water, with water softeners. And I gotta say, I, I'm still not 100% sure how a water softener works. Yeah, it did. But I'm really, really happy with the end result, especially when you get out of the shower. So we asked Corbin more specifically exactly what's going on inside this thing and what it does for... To soften the water. To soften the water. And what's the difference between softened water... And filtered and, and water. And filtered water. So a lot of your competitor systems don't offer a water softener. Mm -hmm. You can buy a water softener alternate but you have kind of the whole package, which again was one of those things that, that we really went for. Yeah. It's like here it all is in, in one place, not to mention the aesthetics of it. A lot of the big mm -hmm. um, softener containers are fiberglass and they look kind of funky and that one looks really pretty. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're all about not only form and functionality, but how does it look? Too? Exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> so talk a little bit if you will, and, and I'm not really sure I don't know how a water softener actually inherently works mm -hmm. and what it does. So if you could talk about that, that would be great. Yeah. So the water filter, most as you highlighted, most of them are made out of some type of a resin um, that drives weight, but it also drives si size. 
And again, as we've talked about with the other uh, systems, we focused in on the stainless part of things. So we developed the stainless, which allows us to go with a, a more compact, it's thin wall, but it's stainless. Um, and it, the reason you have a softener is the filtration isn't necessarily doing anything other than pulling particles out. Mm -hmm. When you get into a softener, there's an ionic exchange that actually changes the water to some level chemically, and that's where you get a softened water. Instead of the hard water, you're going to, from well water, I Correct. every RV pump. Yeah, so your filtration system, just to be clear, is not softening your water per se, right. even though it pulls some of those minerals out. It's not doing anything more than just filtering it out. Mm -hmm. So what what's inside? Is it is it proprietary? Is it something that's common to the industry inside the softener itself? It's a resin-based um, mix that when added with table soft, it reacts and it creates a chemical exchange as it's going through the system. But it's not it's not a proprietary. It's used in most okay. of the RV water softeners. So I notice we have to recharge the system occasionally. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of salt. It's like two 26-ounce boxes mm -hmm. of salt. Uh, what's happening there, and is it going to make our water taste salty? Um, as long as you are back flushing it, as the instructions mm -hmm. suggest, right? Um, there, there shouldn't be a noticeable salt taste to it, um, but it's essentially creating the um, ionic exchange with the material that's inside of the system. Okay. So as you imagine, through time, the salt dissolves, the exchange breaks down, so you have to recharge uh, the, the system. So is it safe to stay? that the worse the water is, the harder this works? True, and that's the same with okay. the filters, right? So there's a thing, a word called turbidity, um, which talks about how dirty your source water is, mm -hmm. and that is very significant in the life of a filter, and the very significant, really, on the hardness is more significant in the life of the water softener. So understanding that systems work as hard as the nastiness of the water, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. What about like a general indication? Are there general indications of when you need to change your filters? Do you see something change? Sure, and this, that's a great question because a lot of people misunderstand that, right? So we recommend you check your filters every two months regardless, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that they look good and, and that they're not full of stuff. Um, and then the way you would tell is typically you'd see a volume drop. So as your filter gets more plugged up, you have less flow, so you'd notice a significant volume drop in the use. Um, but I would not exceed probably four months, and a lot of people you'll see in videos rinsing them out and reusing them, Yes. not realizing that they're in a dark, moist place, so therefore they promote some type of bacterial growth sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to leave them in that state. So. As much as you can extend your dollar, you're also putting your health at risk yeah, by doing so that. So don't rinse your filters. Okay, as Corbin mentioned, there is this is a triple filtration system. We've got your longevity filter, your taste filter, and your 0.2 micron filter, which is the one that gets rid of all the little nasties that might be hiding. And Corbin mentioned that you probably should be checking your filters um, every two months with an anticipated change date of around four months, which is kind of, we've been on this system now for two months. Two months, and yeah, definitely don't go over four months. That's really pushing it. And so we thought, you know, it's been two months. So let's check our filters. We're gonna check our filters. I'm a little scared what we're gonna find. I, I'm not sure what we're gonna find. We've been in some areas where the water has, has been very orange. Orange, yeah. very orange. And yes. there was another campground where the water smelled not so good. I spared you the boring details of emptying the water actually out of each container. You can probably see the table's messy here. So the first one is the longevity filter. That's the one that really filters out the big particles. And you can see it's pretty orange. But looking at this as orange as it is, I say we're really close to changing this filter out. Yeah, this is probably pretty cro close. And as we've mentioned, we've been in some campgrounds where the water was noticeably orange. So yeah, two months in, that's what that looks like. I'd say probably within another month, we're, Definitely we're, should, we're changing these that. out. And then the next one is the taste filter. Now, you might not notice anything there, but this is actually an activated charcoal filter, and you can see inside here, that's got some discoloration to it as well. Yep. That's yep. looking, that's looking We're a little- We're consistent with this one, Yep, I'd a say. little orange. So yeah, I would say about another month or so left there. And then finally is the 0.2 micron filter, getting all those little minute nasty things out of there. And oh yeah, if you look at that one. Now, if you'll notice the colors changed from the first one, this one's not orange, but it is definitely dirty. 
Well, this does this one filter out all the orange bad stuff, and, yep. this, and then that filters out what the all orange the, bad stuff did get. Yeah, everything out that passed through the or that was small enough to pass Just through, through the first filter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that filter is definitely. I looking, think we need to get some of these on order for sure. Yep, and it's yep that's looking like we are ready for a change there. Now your usage will vary. It it is dependent on. Number one, the crappiness of the water in the campground that you're in, for lack of a better word, or that might not be lack of a better word because it really may be it could be crappy, crappy. water, yeah. and it also depends on the amount of usage for your water. And we've mentioned before, but I would consider us fairly high water users. Well, yeah, we're heavy we, users. Yeah, because of the cooking portion of our channel, we and have a lawn shower. Yep, we have a dishwasher <laughs> on board, we have a washer on board, and somebody likes to take, well, let's be clear, both of us. Yeah, really, he likes long showers. Really yeah. like to take long, yeah. hot showers. So I would consider us heavy water users, and I'm thinking that in the next month or so, we're going to get these changed out. So we're looking at every three months of changing these water filters out. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, too. You may go four months. Um, you may go two months. And again, it depends on your usage and what kind of water you're encounter encountering on your travels. And I know that the last couple stops that we've been at have been pretty good. But even the, the I believe, the Tolona Ridge that we were at, which is a resort, I think they were on well water, too, because I did yep. see a little discoloration on some of the concrete mm -hmm. in places. So. You know, it, it's not the, if you're in a high-end resort, you're going to get better water. It's, exactly. You know, it's usually more economical for resorts to use well water. And, and if they're out in the middle of nowhere or out, you know, off the beaten path, they're definitely using well water. I was a full-time RVer, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of experiences and things applied to the systems. The main thing that we really focused in on was, you know, homes consume probably around 300 gallons a day and an RV generally 20 to 30 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. And most of the products that you'll see out there um, are these giant 10 inch home filters, um, which also drives a lot of weight. So their, their systems weigh, you know, competitive would weigh about 28 pounds and ours weighs just over 10 pounds. There's our 10 inches, these are five inches. So as if, if you're an RVer, you know how critical your space is. Yes, yeah, and that's right? one of the things that drew us to Absolutely. the size of the system. Yeah, was... and we get a lot of questions about, did you, you know, isn't the 10 better? Well, it's, it's better if you had used 300 gallons a day. So that was one of the major focuses for us was really weight and size. Mm -hmm. um, and so as you can see, we created a five inch canister, which is really one of the first majorly applied in the industry. Um, and then we also offer those in both plastic and stainless, but we focused in on the stainless because you really don't know all the time where you're getting your filter housings from and if there are any concerns with leaching from plastics, if mm -hmm. that makes some sense. So stainless is a safe, another safe bet when you're dealing with water. Um, the only other major thing that I think if you've had a system you may appreciate is our Quick Connect systems. Oh, we love, we the love Quick Connect, yeah. Quick Connect systems. <laughs> so that comes from me converting all of my hoses when I was an RVer and just the frustration of set up and tear down and my worst one is hooking up to your RV rig itself. Mm -hmm. um, so really our system is set up to go from the faucet all the way to your RV with a quick connect system. So that if you are more nomadic versus a long stair, you can quickly take down, set back up. You take the time to actually do it, which is more important, so you're getting that water that you need. So hopefully you have your water pressure regulator already hooked up. We've talked in other videos about the importance of regulating your pressure into your rig. All these campgrounds, besides having different water, also have different water pressures. All right, it's as simple as quick connect at your water source. Connect the inlet side. Now we're gonna go from the outlet side into our water softener, our water softener connection over to our wet bay. We bring our hose right up and quick connect there. Now, when you turn your water on, I'm gonna put this over on tank fill. Then I'm going to turn my water on because it's gonna take a few minutes for the water filters to fill up with water as well as the water softener. And then there's gonna be some air in the lines, which we do not want 
in the rig. So that's going to go into our fresh water tank. As soon as I hear air stop running through the system, then I'm going to put it over to city water and we're all good to go. Now we chose not to permanently mount our system within our front bay, mostly because we really didn't want to take up the room that's up there for it. So we don't mind our water system being out here outside of the rig. I do like to put it underneath our living room slide so it's less exposed to the direct sunlight. And of course you can, if somebody wants to take your water system, they're gonna get it, but I wanna slow them down as much as possible. So I am gonna run a wire cable through each piece of the system and around the main frame of the slide. Most people, when they see something's locked up, they're not gonna take the time to try and steal it. What if people out there want to get involved like we want to get involved in the greater mission? Absolutely. So obviously supporting Blue Technology, our products, we do give back to an organization called water.org mm -hmm. yep. directly. So um, we did a recent World Water Day with Keystone, who's one of the major manufacturers yep. that we uh, put products on, um, to gather money from the purchases. So we do that from time to time with key events for water.org. And then also just, you know, directly you can donate to water.org. And there's other great, um, you know, causes that are doing that. So if there's something else that um, appeals to you better, water.org is a great um, organization. They touch lives every day, right? So they're investing in more in infrastructures, which we obviously aren't impacting communities, and they've got the capabilities and reach to do that. Mm -hmm. What's going on in the world of water? Um, it's number six on the, the UN's list of potential big issues in the world. Um, so definitely a real problem. The solution to this today is to drink what? Bottled water, which I have over which here. Which has its own, and, yeah. And you know, today the world's consuming 70 million bottles of water a day, mm -hmm. which then, as we talked earlier, leads back to the cyclical problem that now where do those bottles go? So, um, so that's another real issue, right, for the long term. Thank you so much yeah. for taking the time to talk with yeah. us and thank you so much for doing what you're doing and we're mm -hmm. very grateful and thankful that we discovered you and we have this system running um, at our rig and um, we're so happy with it and we can't wait to tell every RVer we see about yeah. it. So. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for the support and you know for taking sure. the time to help us raise the awareness of the Yeah, and the thanks issues. for taking that extra step beyond just being a filter company and actually raising awareness of water issues and yeah. doing something about yeah, our it and helping change the world. Thanks so much to Corbin and his team at Blue Technologies for one, seeing us, and two, really talking about their mission, uh, what's in our water, and really what makes them and their products different for their competition. And I'm, I'm very excited to now be conscious of what's in the water because I drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So now I feel a little bit more comfortable. I have no idea what happened the first three months of our RV journey. I don't even want to think about that. I don't think that. we want to think, know, about we think about it. But from, <laughs> from this point on, we're all good. And I will say the water doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. And that's how I like my water. It, yep. does, it just tastes crisp it's, and, and it's clear. clear. And yep. no flavor. And that's the way, in my opinion, and I think maybe other people's opinion too, that's the way water should be. For sure. So we love this system so much, and Blue Technologies wants you to love this system too. So we have got a code for you to get a discount on your mm -hmm. Blue Technology system. Um, there's a QR code at the end of this video, and it's also linked in the details below. So if you're looking at ClearSource, take a look at Blue Technologies. They're they're rather similar in price, and I think, you know, one, you're going to get a better system. I mean, come on, that stainless steel system. Softener. That, yeah, yeah. That, that's, just, that's just sexy. What can I say? And, but you're also going to be helping clean water around the world. For so sure. it's, it's a system, it's a mission, all wrapped into one, and you can get a discount. So this is not a fully sponsored post. We did get the same discount that we're going to offer you guys out there today. So it's, it's, this isn't about promoting a product and getting a huge commission. We were really more about getting you guys a discount on a system that we really truly believe in. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if there was no discount for us, we would still do this. We, we really sure. believe in this system. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you mm -hmm. haven't subscribed, please do. And then hit the notifications bell because then you'll be notified when we have another video. And give us a like on this video oh, too. Oh yeah, likes are good. And until you get your Blue Waters technology, I hope we don't keep you up at night wondering what's in your water. Because we're not worried about what's in ours now. Nope, I'm gonna take a big drink of my crystal clear, tasteless water. Cheers. And until next time, happy, happy exploring. exploring. Happy drinking too. Water that is. <laughs>